It's on Facebook. Um, yeah, we are on Facebook already live with the band. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you should um, uh, relaunch it on our page on Technoclear in the meantime. I'll do that. Uh, okay. Right. And I've just started the recording, which I'll put on YouTube. Okay. Can I, can I just say who we are and what we're doing here? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Well, we have here uh, with us in video right now. I can see. Let's see if I can make a let me make a, a view, a different view. I'll put a, a speaker view. Let's see. I want to make a gallery view so we can see everybody. There we go. Okay. So now you can see me. I'm Vance Stevens in Penang, Malaysia, and Letizia Cinganotto is here with us uh, from somewhere in Italy. What it says right there where she uh, is? Yeah, near Rome. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. And Daniela Kuru. Kurulo, uh, Kurulo, okay. yeah. yes. Uh, and anyway, uh, she is in Italy. Uh, they work together, Letizia and Daniela. And we're, uh, this is November 6, 2020. And this is Learning Together. And it's Learning Together episode number 497. And um, there's a little uh, poster I made for it. And I'm very clever in... Uh, PowerPoint, pretty easy, huh? <laughs> anyway, so we're streaming on Facebook Live on Learning Together, the Learning Together Facebook page. And if you go to um, uh, learningtogether.pbworks.com, you can see, you can find out how to get, how to reach us in all these places. We're, we're recording on, uh, we're going to put this on YouTube, and we're also got it streaming now on Facebook. So. They're going to talk to us about remote language learning and teaching during the pandemic. And um, I think we can be rather informal and converse. So I'm okay. looking forward to hear what you guys have to say. Great, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Vance, first of all, for uh, having us, for inviting us. It is a wonderful opportunity. And uh, thank you for going global as well. Uh, we are happy and privileged to be um, in, in your program, Learning Together, which is um, a wonderful program. So congratulations. You've been doing a wonderful job during the pandemic, during all these this months. And uh, we had uh, great feedback also from Italian teachers um, attending uh, some of your episodes. Really um, interesting. and. Um, a really um, useful for, for teachers during these emergencies. So thank you very much. We are really happy to be here today. Yes, so, I forgot uh, to mention your work in uh, Electronic Village Online. I mean, it just slipped my mind, but that's really, to me, what you're quite famous for, uh, TechnoClil. You guys have been doing that as a, as a, a massive MOOC, for thousands of participants for what, thousands five of years now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've been, uh, well, Daniel is going to talk about, uh, about technology a little bit more in details, but yes, we've been uh, um, working, we've been hosting uh, this, this uh, session on technology um, uh, within the EVO, Electronic Village Online, uh, starting in January, so that's the um, uh, opportunity for us to invite uh, teachers uh, to attend, to, to register for our MOOC uh, in, uh, starting in January. Um, and uh, yes, we had, we had one in one edition, I think it was in the 2014 edition, maybe uh, we had five or oh, in two editions we have uh, more or less 5,000 teachers uh, uh, so it was a great uh, boom uh, it was a great success and and um, it, the topic um, of this MOOC, Technoclail with an EVO, is just um, this, um, um, these two souls that we, we call them um, techno, so technologies, learning technologies, and CLEL, of course, content and language integrated learning. And um, we've been talking about Technoclail um, a long before <laughs> the pandemic. And uh, of course, um, that is uh, because uh, th this combination between the technologies, learning technologies, and, and CLEL is um, uh, a successful combination and has been has turned out to be um, so useful in, in particular during the, this pandemic. And that's what we are um, talking about uh, today. Um, uh, the, some possible solutions, some possible uh, suggestions that we think, um, we hope um, the participants may find um, relevant for um, uh, teaching uh, and learning um, remotely or po possibly in uh, um, uh, hybrid, blended uh, situations. Now in Italy, um, the situation is quite um, uh, unfortunately 
still um, uh, serious and uh, um, we just had um, yesterday um, a new, well, starting today, a new uh, rules from the government and uh, um, we have different zones in, in Italy um, according to the um, certain data about the, the, um, uh, the, the cases, uh, the COVID cases, but um, uh, generally speaking all over Italy, um, starting from today, all upper secondary schools are, have started um, uh, remote um, uh, activities, remote teaching, while for um, primary and lower, um, uh, it depends, primary and lower, lower um, um, secondary school, it depends on the, the, the region um, where the schools are located. Uh, so it's um, still a um, strong need for our teachers to, um, um, to use technologies, use technologies uh, for language learning, for clearly for any activities, because of course, uh, all the subjects are being um, delivered to be um, taught in uh, through technologies in this, in this uh, remote. Uh, uh, and, and that's why we talk about um, a sort of uh, uh, hybrid, a sort of um, uh, um, integrated, um, uh, technologies uh, solutions, which is a sort of um, uh, wide perspective on the use of technologies um, according to the different um, uh, and different contexts. So we are uh, getting more and more used to flexible and uh, uh, ever-changing um, uh, learning environment according to the to the emergency. So um, that's what our teachers uh, that are really heroes in in this period um, are becoming so flexible in using different different web tools, different platforms, and different and also um, uh, this, this sort of growth mindset that they, uh, they um, uh, come up with, uh, helping them to um, overcome problems and situations and try to adjust the different technologies to the um, particular solution, particular um, uh, needs. Uh, and what we, we've learned, and that is something that we are doing to do now, we are going to do now, we are going in this period to try to um, learn from the pandemic. So the lessons that we learned from the pandemic, from the lockdown, because we have um, some months of fully lockdown, um, now um, we are trying to um, uh, capitalize these lessons learned in order to better plan this um, uh, situation, which is now um, uh, once again remote for upper secondary schools, but maybe in uh, also in uh, primary and lower secondary, we can use technologies as well. So um, we we learned we had we had different, of course, a wide range um, of challenges, but also a wide range of lessons learned uh, that now we can um, take advantage of. For example, um, we we found out that the web is enabling us to rediscover what we've always known about being human. We are connected creators in a connected world about which we care passionately. So we um, uh, um, learned that through technologies we can really be close to each other. We can really um, uh, uh, try to you know to um, we are used to do anything now online even uh, parties even um, uh, dinner and uh, anything together. So that's why we are social creators so that, that's why um, um, Crystal um, doesn't like, didn't like the term uh, social distance, but physical distance, uh, David Crystal. Um, physical distance, because social distance is something that we still can do through the technologies, and we encourage that. And of course, it's something that we encourage with our students, because social emotional learning, and uh, so this sort of uh, um, uh, affective side of our children, of our students, must be taken into uh, account, of course. And the, the students are real, are, are our heroes and um, uh, are really the protagonist. And uh, um, we had among different lessons learned. This is the, um, um, taken from um, uh, an article from on the Guardian. What the the um, uh, a case example in, in Italy of students um, becoming um, uh, helper of teachers because sometimes this is a problem that teachers are not so skillful in technologies, for example, and uh, and uh, students. Um, can can help can help us can help teachers can be um, a sort of facilitator and digital consultant in this case so that's something um, that we um, we can I mean it's is it's, uh, it's food for thought because um, it's a way to um, uh, enhance to give value to their skills uh, we know that they are uh, they are skillful they are uh, digital um, advanced digital advanced so that's that's some some um, uh, could be an opportunity to um, give them um, a clear role to announce their, their, their role as protagonist. 
Um, then, of course, we had some, some um, sort of revolution, uh, which um, uh, is a real, a real, an important lesson learned um, uh, about, for example, the use of mobile, mobile devices in um, uh, school, um, uh, in Italian schools were more or less, uh, well, ac according to different, different rules, uh, ministerial rules, but generally was uh, uh, discouraged, was not, uh, was, 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 was avoided. Teachers um, didn't like uh, students um, uh, using their, their mobile phone uh, during the lesson. They just uh, wanted them to switch uh, the mobile phone off. Um, and uh, this is, this, this picture uh, was viral during the lockdown, even if viral is not the proper word, but um, because it's really interesting. So there was not allowed, it was not allowed before, but now, uh, of course, if uh, they have, um, in some cases, the mobile phone is the, the only way to connect with the teachers if we, and so to, to, to build this bridge um, uh, between school and, and um, uh, families and the home. So it's, it's something completely um, uh, flipped, we can say. And we are all used to this, this sort of challenges is. And now we, we can see um, we can say that um, uh, we we are excellent. Now we can um, uh, after the long experience during the lockdown, uh, we know that we, we need to switch on the microphone. We need to. I mean, there, there may be some some uh, technical problems. We we all know how to how it works. And uh, this is something that we've de developed new skills that um, of course students, our students, but we ourselves, teachers and educators and families as well, um, parents. Uh, developed all these competencies with the uh, about the, the use of these uh, technologies that um, uh, maybe they, they didn't have in uh, before so that that there was that there is an opportunity um, about the role of the teacher some lessons learned um, and I'm of course I'm quoting here um, um, at least some um, uh, reference um, the five awareness principles of course um, we are all more aware we are all more aware of the uh, teaching processes learning processes of the role of the teacher the role of the students um, of the um, interaction of the importance of um, the uh, um, of facilitating this interaction that needs to be um, kept alive because uh, sometimes the we know that through the, um, uh, on the screen, where we are just um, uh, talking on the screen, interacting on the screen, uh, some dimensions like um, non-verbal language, like, um, uh, you know, the, um, all the, the pragmatic, the um, uh, social linguistic aspects that are so strong in, uh, in presence when we interact in presence. Um, you know, when they are mediated through a screen, through a computer, they may be, of course, um, uh, um, less um, uh, effective. They may be, um, uh, some, somehow not, not considered because, of course, due to the limit of, of, the, of, of the screen or the technologies. Um, but we need to find a way to um, keep uh, the interaction uh, alive, to, to keep it going, uh, and to, um, uh, and to um, continue, I mean, um, uh, establish this, this empathy, this uh, social uh, emotional side. Um, of our um, students' uh, learning process. Um, uh, then the, um, uh, a lot of opportunities came from, um, uh, of course, from the, 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 the website, from, from the internet, because uh, there were a lot, there are a lot of um, uh, uh, institutions um, uh, providing uh, um, uh, resources, providing, and this is an example, the ECML, the European Center for Modern Languages, um, uh, that opened up a session uh, on, the, on the portal, uh, on the website, with a lot of resources uh, for learners, parents, and teachers. And parents is um, another um, uh, new, um, let's say, another lessons learned, how we can involve parents in the, in the learning and teaching process, how we can really create this bridge with the, with the families that it was um, maybe in the past was not so evident, was not so um, uh, important. I mean, it was important, but now with, with this um, uh, lockdown, with this remote teaching and learning is, is, is really uh, essential. Um, and a lot of initiatives like uh, yours, Vance, like these uh, webinars, all this uh, support um, uh, uh, that they were, of course, um, uh, so valid. Uh, other resources about the, um, from, from the CACML, um, uh, about different tools. Uh, another example, the Harvard Business, um, uh, the Harvard um, Graduate School of Education. They also uh, had a lot of webinars and so on. And also our institute, uh, our institute, my institute uh, in DIRE, which is the National Institute for Documentation Innovation 
innovation and educational research in Italy, um, is the institution that um, uh, um, make research, educational research, um, in cooperation with the Ministry of Education. And um, uh, we've been, um, uh, we've been um, trying to, to support our teachers um, during this period. We are still doing that. Uh, and uh, um, so um, we've been hosting a lot of webinars, um, uh, trying to um, uh, create um, a community of practice, which is still um, uh, which has been established thanks to some um, projects, in particular school network, which is called Avanguardia Educative, where teachers can share among each other in this community of practice experiences um, in, in a sort of mutual enrichment so that they can, uh, maybe um, more expert teachers can share their, um, you know, the solutions that they adopted to overcome certain problems and so they can learn from each other. So we have a lot of webinars uh, which are, uh, which have been recorded uh, and and um, are available on our portal, of course, they are in Italian. Um, some um, tools, some of the most popular tools among our teachers, and then Daniela is going to go uh, in the, more in, the, in depth in this um, in gallery. Um, uh, this to um, uh, the Google tool creator, which, which is quite popular. So how to create this sort of uh, um, uh, adventure and travels, uh, virtual travels, and Radio Garden. Radio Garden um, was a real um, uh, discovery, was real, real popular during lockdown, and it, it's is still um, a very um, useful, of course, um, uh, because you can click on, um, uh, on, on, on a green spot on, uh, on um, uh, any part of the world, and then you can uh, listen to the radio bro being broadcasted in that particular moment, in that particular place. So, of course, for languages is uh, an effective way um, uh, to foster um, uh, listening, listening comprehension, comprehension and pronunciation, and, uh, and also culture, because you are going there in that even virtual in that particular context, in that particular country. So it's a really immersive um, experience. Um, then our teachers, of course, during this period, um, uh, uh, are, uh, have, have learned how to plan. Uh, planning is, is um, so crucial in, of course, in uh, any um, sort of um, uh, learning and teaching um, episode, module, pathway, and so on. Uh, but now even more. Now even more is important. It's important to uh, decide um, uh, what sort of um, environment, what sort of um, uh, technical infrastructure, what tools, apps, and so on, how to um, uh, balance also um, the um, synchronous and asynchronous um, uh, moments. So um, the, the, this, this sort of flipped learning that um, in, uh, um, uh, in a very uh, interesting article published on your, uh, on your um, uh, journal, um, uh, ESLJ, uh, on the flipped learning, the, the new um, the model on flipped learning, which I found really, really uh, interesting. Um, flipped learning has, has come, turned out to be um, uh, successful, uh, it, it was uh, um, successful, it already was successful before the pandemic, but now during pandemic, during lockdown, um, this new model of uh, flipping um, uh, between uh, synchronous and asynchronous and um, uh, so with all the different um, roles, um, and I would uh, strongly suggest participants uh, to read, uh, maybe, maybe once you can put the, the link to the, um, to your journal uh, in, in the chat, what this, this article, uh, I think it was by Carolina um, uh, Rodriguez, uh, the article. Well, I, I'm going to find it when uh, when uh, Daniela speaks and put the, the chat. That is really really um, interesting because it gives um, uh, an overview of the potential of the flipped classroom, the flipped learning, especially during the this um, you know uh, this remote blended and hybrid uh, teaching and learning, and uh, is really to be encouraged in in our um, teaching uh, model um, uh, in, in this this this, uh, this emergence in this period of uh, you know remote uh, teaching and learning some examples of tools used by the teachers um, like Ting link story jump book creator but the uh, so a, a lot of tools um, and uh, the um, the perspective is and the idea that we had uh, also listening to um, uh, the stories of our teachers uh, during our webinars is that um, the students um, in in this situation can really be the protagonist uh, as I was mentioning at the beginning with the with the article from the Guardian uh, because um, they 
are um, involved in um, in, uh, in creative activities. Creative, uh, um, they are uh, challenged to um, work together to produce maybe digital articles, maybe the um, poster books or e-books or some other sort of uh, uh, technologies. I mean, when when these when technologies are used uh, to really engage our students to produce something concrete, something some something concrete that could be um, uh, mainly a collaborative, the output of a collaborative work, it really works. Of course, um, it's not only live lesson with uh, delivering content like I'm doing now, sorry, but <laughs> it is not this, of course, but what our teachers, um, you know, um, reported to be very effective is when students are really engaged in doing something in concrete, especially with their, with, with their peers. Some other examples, a podcast, so creating podcast, um, uh, maybe school podcast, a podcast of the school, um, and um, in the, this planning, um, uh, planning um, uh, idea, I mean, general planning of the um, uh, teaching pathway um, includes, of course, um, the particular use of uh, the tools, of the different tools that could be uh, adopted by a school. And um, uh, in particular, we have also these this, um, uh, guidelines um, uh, from the ministry encouraging um, a particular choice, particular um, uh, direction from um, uh, the school so that teachers could uh, cooperate and um, uh, use, uh, you know, um, uh, try to, to work together using uh, same going towards the same direction. Here is just an example from a teacher using Padlet, TED, and the electronic register. Um, uh, so just um, uh, trying to tailor, uh, make all the, the different activities uh, using these different tools. Here is an example of Padlet, um, uh, so on, on, on Shakespeare. Um, uh, another example with um, TED um, uh, that was very popular. Popular, uh, because uh, thanks to the um, different repository, the different videos, the different um, uh, and, and also the opportunity that TED um, offers to manipulate and to uh, embed video in a sort of uh, a virtual class where the teacher can invite his or her students and discuss about the content and uh, um, also uh, um, uh, doing taking some sort of test, multiple choice tests and so on is very um, also in, in this, this uh, perspective or flipped learning is, is really um, is really effective. And uh, uh, also this, this TED Ed, the TED Online was mentioned um, uh, during the IATF conference and um, I was, uh, there was this the wonderful um, uh, webinar by Alex Warren on, on uh, uh, the use of um, TED, Ed, TED, TED, um, TED Ed for online, for remote teaching and learning. And uh, um, it provided a lot of um, examples of activities uh, um, that's a very, very effective. Um, another um, tool that was used and that is being used um, is debate as teaching uh, practice, teaching uh, methodology. Um, so um, organizing uh, debates, um, debates among uh, students with two um, uh, groups, two teams, um, uh, defending uh, um, uh, posi uh, their position in favor or against a certain claim or motion launched by the teacher. Um, uh, we have uh, in, in Italy, um, uh, we've been working a lot on debate recently in um, also organizing um, uh, the Italian uh, debate Olympiad, the national um, debate Olympiad, and, uh, and also um, as a part of our research um, uh, mission research area in my institute, um, uh, because debate can, especially during this period, um, uh, foster public speaking, oral skills, but also writing skills, because we have some tools, and here, uh, there are some examples, like Chialo, for example, or Tricider, which are tools that allow students to um, uh, um, post their argumentations in favor or against, and so on, in writing. So they can, um, in, you know, simulate a sort of uh, oral debate through Zoom, like we're doing here, also working in the breakout rooms, and so on, but I can also write, they can also post their um, argumentation um, in, in writing through this, um, this, this web tools that are really um, um, 
learning environment um, devoted to um, uh, this specific um, topic. So there, there are pros and cons, and then it's really engaging. And also gamification is, of course, is, is highlighted. Uh, Pen Pan Schools is um, a, web, a website, a, a, um, a platform that um, uh, is very, has become very popular um, uh, during this period um, because um, teachers can, can enter, also parents can enter, and um, students are um, encouraged to get in touch with other peers in, in other parts of the world and they can interact and they can um, uh, choose a, a topic um, uh, to work on to produce. Uh, some um, output, some digital artifact or some other output uh, in a project-based learning perspective. Um, and so there's this, this collaborative dimension, the use of the language, and, um, and of course, this international exchange that we also foster in Italy, for example, with the Erasmus programs or e-twinning programs, which are uh, the European um, uh, you know, um, uh, international uh, programs. And my institute, Indire, is the national institute for these programs. But this is internet, this is global, is a, um, a platform that, that really encourages cooperation and um, international, international dimension and co collaboration at uh, you know, global um, level. I'm going to just um, um, go towards the conclusion, then give the floor to Daniela to um, show this example of an alternative to the um, uh, physical class uh, through a virtual class. And uh, we have Vance, who is a guru on um, Minecraft and Second Life and all this immersive world is among the gurus. Um, we have our, um, our own, um, let's say, Second Life in Italy, which is called Edmondo. And it's a virtual world um, only for teachers and students, so it's safe, it's protected. Um, and a lot of uh, teachers found out that um, uh, um, bringing their students in a, a sort of virtual environment like this one, you have an example of, from a teacher, um, uh, uh, with their avatars, so they can, um, uh, where well, they could choose, you know, they are, they are of course, they are, uh, um, avatar like the uh, also clothes and and so on um it uh, seemed like um a sort of simulation of um, the, the class, the, the real class, the physical class, and also um, is a sort of way to um, bring them together. Um, they had the feeling of, of being uh, close because uh, you know they, the avatars are close. They can interact in chat. They can interact also through uh, through the microphone. But at the same time, um, seeing themselves, uh, their they uh, second self in in, uh, in this virtual um, environment. Uh, somehow um, uh, uh, add them being feeling close uh, and uh, and so um, highlighting this social and emotional um, affective uh, side of the learning. So just um, this um, uh, quotation that I, I think is so um, helpful, so uh, meaningful in, in this period, it's not that we use technology, we live technology. Nowadays, um, we just uh, are experimenting that um, uh, technology is really uh, our life. Uh, we, we just, uh, um, it, it's, it's an emergency. Uh, and, and of course, even if not a real lockdown, down, we are still so um, uh, linked. We are always <laughs> linked to the, 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 the um, uh, devices, the computer for for uh, for anything. Uh, but this is the, um, uh, the this is the opportunity for us to um, learn how to use technologies and uh, how to get, of course, the best of it. So thank you very much, and I leave you. I leave the floor to Daniela. Thank you, Letizia, and I would share some slides, PowerPoint presentation, if it's possible. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vance. Yep. Oh, for... did I, have I set you up as a co-host? Yeah. Let's see. That's okay. Make sure I've done that. Make a co-host, there you go. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, you're, you're co-host now. Well, while, while you're getting set up, uh, uh, Jane Xian is, is here. I've been following, I don't usually, I'm not usually able to do this because I'm usually hosting these things and involved, but now I'm sort of on the side so I can actually follow the Facebook. So you have uh, several people in the Facebook stream mm -hmm. and uh, Jane Shin is one of them. She's doing a, um, a uh, an, she's proposed an EVO session on scientific literacy and CLIL. 
And so she's quite interested in your topic and she had a couple of questions in the Facebook chat and I invited her in here to ask you, uh, maybe you, Jane could do that while, uh, while Daniela is getting set up. Yes. Hi, um, thank you. For, um, thank you for inviting me to ask questions and um, you've had such a wonderful sessions, Technoclil and um, Letizia has introduced so many different um, tools to uh, help uh, learners. And um, can I ask if these tools are mostly for adult learners and do you have experience with um, kids learning remotely and do you have like uh, any apps or tools that you use um, for young learners uh, to learn remote remotely? Yes, do yeah. Well, then, yeah, in fact, Daniela yeah, is so. going to, yeah, yeah. It's going to explain because uh, it's a part of her presentation, so uh, she will answer your question. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm not on a huge time uh, bind, so Daniela, if you were, if we've cut into your time, go ahead and take another five minutes or whatever you need. Okay. And uh, thank you, Vance. Anyway. Uh, with this second part, sure. I think mm -hmm. that we can meet uh, the, the the question, and then we can satisfy the the the, the, the request of uh, teaching uh, remote teaching with young learners because we had a lot of experience about that, of course. Um, thank you, Letizia, also for this overview that uh, um, gave us so, um, an explanation of what we did, how we reacted during the lockdown in Italy. Of course, it was not the only country that had this emergency. And uh, for this reason, I want uh, I like to quote um, something that uh, Andreas Schleicher, the Director of Education Skills, uh, and and uh, for the uh, economic cooperation and uh, organization for economic cooperation development uh, said uh, regarding uh, the, the, the pandemic uh, uh, emergency sorry, sorry, and Daniela, lockdown. You're not foods. sharing your, your slides, sorry, Daniela, you're not sharing your slides, sorry. I'm not sharing slides. How can I do that? Yeah, it's possible. Uh, thank you, Letizia. What about now? I'm, I'm sharing them. Can you see them? Yeah. Yes, okay, now. Oh, okay. So just to quote what Andrea Schleicher said, uh, he said one in 10 young people don't even have a desk to study at home, let alone access to computers or the internet. Additionally, only about 8% of teachers worldwide feel comfortable or have experience in digital teaching and learning. Many teachers often seen replicating a traditional lesson on the computer, which showcases their lack of familiarity or comfort with digital pedagogies. Well, this was at the beginning of uh, March in 2020, and there were all the people uh, um, were um, sadly uh, immersed in, uh, in remote teaching. And the situation, I can say that the situation due to the emergency quite changed, but because we did a lot of effort to do our best, and this was also happening in Italy, where more or less we can recognize our um, people as belonging uh, to that uh, percentage that Andreas Schleichel ha highlighted, uh, not only for teachers, but also for students. Um, a lot of people worldwide always quote uh, Mark Bransky, um, a very famous uh, quotation that is uh, our students, our young learners are digital immigrants, uh, are digital natives, while we as uh, young old adults, we are digital immigrants. Um, to tell the truth, I don't like this difference because I don't feel that uh, this is the case in uh, most situations. I would like to talk about a sort of uh, digital uh, human quality that is a digital wisdom 
theme uh, that uh, um, can be developed as uh, a result of an empowerment that nat natural human skills uh, can receive uh, through a creative and clever use of digital technologies. And this is the reason why Letizia and I are struggling and have been uh, implemented a lot of courses at Technocleal, but also other um, creative courses, innovative training initiatives, where we um, try to focus on the powerfulness of technologies and importance of uh, uh, being immersed in the digital reality that now um, is uh, um, characterizes every uh, field in which we live. So we have to develop a sort of digital uh, wisdom, uh, just acquiring, developing a sort of awareness of uh, uh, the powerfulness of technologies. How can we do that? Uh, our task today is uh, uh, to, to just to highlight some aspects and to give you some hints uh, to, to break down old barriers and start teaching and learning with technologies. Uh, one very important project, according to, to me, according to us, is uh, the Digicom uh, project that uh, gives us a framework of reference uh, just to understand and to develop the awareness I was talking about, about being an educator and uh, just in educators, but also a student, and how to have um, the, the, which fields, which areas of uh, improving our digital skills are important. We have to focus on our uh, professional engagement to, to develop our digital competencies. We have to exploit the most of digital digital resources uh, through our teaching processes uh, and uh, the assessment, we have to empower le learners uh, to develop transversal competencies uh, in a language, of course, but also in uh, specific subjects. Uh, and we have to facilitate their floors uh, to do that uh, through, um, uh, of course, uh, information and media, through developing media literacy, but mm, through different interaction processes, uh, such as communication, such as interaction and also to develop um, a, a, the ability to create a content uh, to be responsible of what they do on, uh, on um, online uh, through the internet uh, especially during these uh, remote uh, teaching and learning processes so to have a framework is always important to know where you are and just to set your goals uh, to uh, understand where you want to go uh, and uh, this can be very uh, useful. Um, regarding how to, uh, to enhance remote teaching and learning processes, I think that we have to take into consideration some uh, key elements. And uh, uh, of course, we have to, to set the environment and we have to make the most of open education resources. We have to enhance the processes, but also we have to adopt the right strategies. And we also have to play a different role where we are online uh, and this of course implies a specific digital pedagogy uh, that should guide our behavior online with our students. Uh, what I find very useful is a, um, a book that is an e-book that is for free uh, on the, the, the web by Tony Bates that is about teaching in the digital age and and uh, he considers lots of uh, uh, key points, uh, such as how to develop a content, uh, considering the goals and how to structure them uh, in terms of activity and quantity and depth, how to um, consider and to select uh, specific skills uh, uh, regarding thinking activities or practical activities and uh, discussion processes. We have to uh, always to consider how to support our uh, learners uh, um, and uh, giving them um, uh, uh, the right uh, help in a scaffolding uh, perspective and also in counseling them or requiring their feedback to uh, replan our activities if needed. Uh, and regarding resources, uh, we have to uh, consider all the possibilities that technologies and facilities offer nowadays uh, according to learners' characteristics. Uh, that is, uh, are really um, uh, 
as we said before, if they are according to the context, a younger or um, teenagers or um, any um, educational need that can, can, they can have in terms of uh, styles or uh, context or uh, background. And of course, what is very difficult nowadays is how to assess remote teaching, uh, because we were um, quite familiar with traditional ways of us assessing students on site that implied tests or essays or different projects. How can we do now that we are online and we do not have the, 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 the total control of our students? Of course, as we can see, we have to consider um, a, a, a sort of authentic assessment, uh, taking into account the fact that they are uh, behaving differently. So what we do online uh, should be the indicator of uh, uh, an authentic form of assessment that uh, considers uh, something different from um, before, and also the idea of uh, enhancing our students' uh, production of e-portfolios, uh, where the best practices that can be can uh, realize that can be considered. Let's start with the environment. Of course, Letizia was talking about synchronous and asynchronous situations that should be um in a balance uh, and uh, consider taking uh, taken into account also because we have to respect uh, safety rules. So students can't be all the time online in synchronous activities, but we have to integrate uh, a part of our curriculum with asynchronous activities. So we have to start with the learning management systems or like Moodle, for example, or any, any learning management systems that we can imagine we have, can set a boards a digital boards we can uh, exploit the powerfulness of social networks that are so important today and we can also uh, take the advantage of using communication channels uh, as far as the learning platform um, 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 we I mentioned the Moodle platform but we can also use uh, some different uh, um, solutions and uh, the, the, the word of Google uh, gave us the possibility to use uh, uh, Google Suite for education for free. Uh, then also Microsoft gave us the chance to use uh, all uh, their uh, facilities or Edmodo, this is quite friendly because it's uh, very similar to Facebook. In Italy, we also had uh, WeSchool, uh, that it is an Italian platform, um, but I think that it can be accessible also um, from other countries. As far as uh, um, uh, other synchronous uh, situ situations, uh, we can uh, enhance uh, uh, communication channels, can be considered, uh, some, for example, Skype is a way to share activities and to be online in uh, also now in a huge uh, group of people, or we can contact and share uh, things uh, through WhatsApp, Instagram, and uh, Twitter, or of course, Instagram that are um, uh, the Telegram that are uh, the, the, the best channels use nowadays. As far as uh, uh, platforms that can be also very useful uh, and these young learners can find uh, their uh, way, uh, we, we have, as you see, a very colored and logos and uh, um, um, young friendly, uh, very friendly for young people uh, are Twinkle, Wakelet, Moby Dick or Brain Pop or uh, Bouncy. These are uh, specific platform, e-learning platform that can be used uh, to set activities for uh, younger students uh, where you can uh, share content, you, you can use the, the toolkit that they made at disposal for free, or you can also uh, start um, synchronous activities on them. Uh, and I say to some boards, of course, you have um, Padlet is becoming um, a, the, the most widespread uh, digital board used all around the world, but now
now it is not for free anymore. You can only use, uh, I think, three boards at maximum. Uh, so there are alternatives. A netboard can be one of them, just to share, to organize your contents and to share your activities uh, through uh, the web. And uh, you can see um, this uh, bouncy is, uh, uh, you can uh, create uh, your, uh, how um, the, the, the classes you want. There is no limit in that. Uh, you can also have uh, the parents uh, account that is very important because uh, in this way they can control what students are doing. For young learners, I always say that it's important to start a sort of um, not just a relationship, but a sort of agreement with parents. They should be there and help teachers to, to, to implement a remote teaching and online activities. And through this um, powerful platform, you can start a lot of uh, activities. And then you have uh, to, to, to do something that, especially regarding language learning, uh, can be um, implementing according to the context. It is important that you always refer uh, to the European framework for uh, languages as a reference uh, to select appropriately open educational resources according to the level of your students. And then you can um, implement a lot of creativity tools and software in uh, the e-learning environments that you have decided to consider. Uh, even if it is Italian, just to quote the, Itali the, the Minister of Education, why when we started uh, our um, lockdown, I said that one of the best uh, things, one of the, the most important things to take into consideration is uh, uh, trying to do school um, and to uh, set processes uh, considering the importance of interacting online uh, just to, not, uh, just to uh, prevent uh, um, problems of isolations because between um, among our students and also to, to set a sort of a community, uh, which I found uh, very important in guiding my processes. The idea of uh, supporting, helping uh, my students uh, to promote uh, interactive uh, solutions and to build together a community of learners and uh, teachers inside the institution or also, or also beyond. And so the interaction was the key word. Um, and Never, it is important to say uh, and to refer to this uh, um, introduction by the, 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 the European Commission as a new online uh, descriptor, uh, the online interaction, because students are always online. The important is to see how they communicate, how to share, how to how they share, how to interact with each other, and so try to to just to to catch this opportunity of promoting something that uh, could be similar to what they do do uh, when uh, they are in an informal situation uh, because the goal here is to set a bridge to set a bridge between formal uh, learning and informal learning formal learning is what happens inside the institution and informal learning is uh, what generally happens when they are free from the institution when they are on their own now they are on their own being inside an institution process uh, how to create um, how to to to, to um to consider the gap that is between these two areas and how to create a bridge between them uh, through a lot of web tools that can be all whatever we say is always free is always an open education resource so even if it, I do not mention that uh, please remember that Letizia and I have always uh, um, uh, suggested resources that are for free uh, this is a way to draw together a draw chat when you want to start a new board. We mentioned the netboard and Padlet, but we also have this other solution, this alternative. And in, in regarding the writing skills, we can also have our students narrate themselves. This is very important um, in terms of a pedagogical aspect. Also, Brunner said that uh, narration is very therapeutic. So if the students say something 
thinking about themselves, they feel less isolated. And especially if they, they tell stories or if they play to write together in a, in a promotion of a gamification perfect perspective, or if they share what is their learning environment, a personal learning environment that can be can become a classroom learning environment. Another uh, um, very funny way to help students speak, read, write, and play with words is with this website. It's a tool, see, uh, Split and Spin, that uh, splits words to and uh, gives you the idea to creative uh, write a new story, uh, starting with the two split words. Uh, I did with my students and really enjoyed it. I used to, um, uh, to start a sort of competition with a breakout room in Webex, but you can do, do that also on Zoom. And, uh, and then we had uh, the, the, the winners of the best tales and reproduce it to speaking words. Uh, they can also, as Lisa was mentioning the debate, another way is uh, to set a round table uh, just uh, to focus the attention or particular topic on uh, concept and uh, parlay is a, a, a right tool to do that. And also if you want to enhance speaking activities, voice thread is uh, the, the tool that um, allows you to record the voices or just to type then have the recorded already done for you. Students can have a video or can not. Uh, they can choose an avatar just to protect their privacy. Uh, dot storming is like Instagram because people can have pictures, images, and other people can express their likes or dislikes of our comments. It is something that quite uh, similar to what they do in their daily life. Life. Uh, and then I have Wakelet. The Wakelet is also for young students. Uh, you have already made uh, interactive lesson plans. Uh, you have a lot of resources for students. Um, students can uh, be guided with uh, assignments and uh, um, also the parents can uh, have a look at what they are doing. And uh, the, the idea, I back it up at that phase is uh, crosses all uh, the, the, this powerful platform uh, is a collaboration that I always consider important. I, I think that um, a lot of people know Mintimeter, but uh, I would mention it because it is very interactive and then has recently added a lot of uh, different opportunities to uh, create not only live presentations, so it can also used, be used just to assess on, uh, on the spot what students are learning or not uh, to multiple choices uh, questions or to um, uh, surveys or to just to express uh, their uh, feelings and the ideas regarding a specific topic and as i said before gamification also is uh, really the right solution to assess students uh, even if uh, they um, it is uh, not an institutional way of doing that uh, because you can uh, check the students uh, progress uh, through the responses and it is very involving there are lots of apps and tools that um, allow you to create uh, different activities according to the uh, the different subjects but you can also find in all these uh, open education resources already made um, apps and quizzes for your students according to your needs what i always like to quote is uh, these um, a very famous um, idea uh, that I share by Eva Orkner that may makes a distinction between space and place. I think that remote teaching implies the idea of setting what is just a space like an e-learning environment with synchronous or asynchronous activities into a place that implies the interaction, the living experience and the use of space by its inhabitants. What, um, just to conclude, I think that the best way to face this remote teaching emergency and of course, remote 
remote learning is taking into account the, the, the possibility of being part of a community. Uh, here you see, uh, you can see different possibilities. Uh, it is a mentioned pen polls for students. I would suggest uh, for European people uh, the existence of training or the existence of teacher academy and school education Galwick. Uh, of course, in test teach you can find lots of uh, people uh, eager to share their resources and uh, why not the electronic village online community where we uh, were all started with our technical course but also with the previous course that with Letizia and I had on personal learning environments and uh, networks. The idea is uh, just to, to keep a focus on lifelong learning but also to take the best of life while learning through communities in order to enhance a sort of life deep learning. If you want to join us, we, are, uh, we have a Facebook group of 9,000 participants at TechnoClil forever because we started TechnoClil in 2014 and then we have had up to uh, six or 10 uh, sessions up to now. And so um, for this reason, I hope we'll have another session the next uh, mid-January and uh, otherwise you can join our community to keep uh, to be updated on what we do. Thank you, Vance and Jane, for inviting us. And uh, if there are any questions, so we are very happy to answer them. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. I uh, I don't know who else is speaking in here. Um, and the, the Facebook kind of uh, hasn't been very active over this presentation, but I really uh, think you provided a, a really interesting collection of resources that most of which I'm aware of, but, and then some extra ones, but uh, um, do, does this, do these, uh, this number of tools pre present difficulties for the people that, the teachers that you work with? Or how are they coping with these? Because they're so hard to integrate. I mean, you can. Um, it's difficult when you're uh, when you're in the situation that we've been in for the last um, few months. You know, we're sort of new to this. I mean, you've you've shown very well how you've gone from emotion, uh, emergency remote teaching into a more systematic approach to uh, your uh, courses and coming to grips with. How you, how you deal with pandemic and obviously uh, showing successes in doing that. But then on the other hand, you, you, I would say you're gurus in this, uh, uh, in this uh, kind of thing. I just wonder how other teachers that you're working with are coping with using all these tools and integrating, or are you able to train them? Well, of course, I need to trade them. I'm, uh, I uh, have a particular role in my school. In Italy, we have the Animatore Digitale, is some, uh, someone who um, uh, has the responsibility of promoting uh, digital uh, literacy in uh, schools and to help and support teachers in doing this. Of course, in my case, our school was, uh, in, I think, in a good position because uh, we had already implemented courses on uh, Moodle uh, and uh, for more than uh, 15 years. So teachers were quite familiar with that and also students. But there were a lot of new teachers, uh, new teachers uh, just moved to our school that uh, had to be um, guided. And so we, uh, we, we started a lot of uh, training courses for them. I also belong because I'm second vice president of TESOL Italy and also gave a lot of TESOL uh, training courses uh, and also with Letizia. Letizia uh, and I are always uh, together in uh, these uh, training uh, initiatives. Uh, so uh, we, we, um, we supported people, uh, I think not only in Italy, uh, being part of TESOL uh, Italy, but all over the world in managing the situation. And they asked a lot of uh, um, help uh, regarding how to assess people, how to uh, start uh, a new learning environment, how to uh, use uh, uh, specific tools. So I realized a lot of tutorials on uh, YouTube channels and on uh, my school YouTube channel and uh, just to support people, uh, not only in, uh, of course, in, um, in my school or my um, 
town, but also all over Italy, and I also uh, take, uh, took part in some initiative that Letizia could say, uh, organized by Indire, because the uh, in, Institute of Documentation and Research, where Letizia is a researcher, uh, did a lot of uh, to support people. Letizia, perhaps you can say something about that. Yeah, the, the, um, we've been, um, uh, as, as I said at the beginning, um, uh, we organized, um, uh, we have this uh, school network, um, well, uh, main, two main school networks um, belonging to, to, say, in projects. Um, and uh, uh, within these uh, big school networks, we try to create, to enhance this community of practice. And so we, we had a lot of webinars uh, on different topics, on different, um, that could be maybe, um, subject um, related to subject related to so web tools or other you know problems um, so that teachers could uh, um, uh, discuss and share that that experience their experiences and learn from from each other also webinars addressed to school leaders um, uh, and so uh, principals talking to their colleagues uh, because of course um, it, the situation was new to everybody so um, uh, it was a way you know to to also informally to to discuss and share ideas through these, these initiatives and then also on our website we publish different tutorials and uh, links to um, resources um, uh, to you know tools that uh, teachers could uh, um, use in, in particular in um, in the field of language uh, language languages and, and CLEL um, we had um, uh, webinars with experts um, uh, also um, uh, sort of teach meet um, uh, webinars where teachers could um, uh, explain, could present their experiences, so how they cope with, how they planned and implemented, they planned and implemented the remote um, CLIL uh, activities. Uh, so it, it was essentially um, this, this sort of uh, exchange of experiences that we try to uh, enhance um, uh, online so that they, at the same time, teachers uh, couldn't feel alone uh, and but, but feel part of, uh, of a community, of a bigger community, because of course these problems were problems uh, were shared, were common problems. And at the same time, uh, more expert teachers could, um, uh, you know, somehow um, in, in, in a peer learning perspective, um, uh, share their, their, you know, their expertise and their uh, case examples to, to their, their colleagues. Um, you mentioned uh, some websites, <laughs> and if you have any links to share, if you put them in the text chat, as you did already with, your, with the, the one for uh, Lane and, uh, and Ilka's article, uh, they'll go into the, we can record them in the um, learningtogether.net uh, uh, blog post that I will post tomorrow i hope yeah. also we're very interactive all my i like to talk to people during my webinars that i host and, and interact with and so if anybody else has any questions you're quite welcome to open the mic uh i saw emilia and carlotta yes uh, yes yes okay jane go ahead i have a question <laughs> thank you um leticia both you and daniela has been on a leadership role in the CLIL community, not just in Italy, but also around the globe. Um, the, 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 the thing is this, in Taiwan, we've, um, the government has decided that um, we're going to be a bilingual nation in 2030, and we are having a big push on implementing bilingual education, especially uh, um, the CLIL approach and using English to teach other subjects. And this is why um, my university, we, we've set up a new center for research on bilingual education, and um, I'm, which I'm in charge of, and we're focusing on teaching um, science and math and English. And um, with such a, with both of you as an experienced uh, leader in CLIL, um, do you have any, I'd like to ask you for some su suggestions or advice as to uh, a, a new nation who are uh, just new to pushing forward a bilingual education, especially starting from um, kindergarten and elementary school. And um, right now teachers are, um, a lot of English teachers have been asked to teach other subjects, but, but they're not quite um, ready to teach science or math. Um, and science and math teachers, their English is not quite ready 
their English level is not quite ready to teach um, the subject matter. And so we're, we're here, um, you know, s starting something new and um, would like to have your suggestions or some, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, tips in um, helping us step, step forward, uh, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can I can start and maybe Daniela can can add something. Um, well, of course, it's it's very uh, demanding. It's very <laughs> you know it's very challenging. So good luck with this uh, this program. And of course, we share our email here. So if you want to get in touch with us, we'd be happy. Um, uh, I can I can um, say something about the, um, the policy um, uh, making. Let's say policy um, um, language policies uh, that we adopted in uh, in Italy um, in uh, because uh, I. I was involved also in, uh, I was at the ministry in particular in, um, uh, in the years when, when CLIL became compulsory in Italy, because CLIL is compulsory in Italy in upper secondary schools. Um, and I still, of course, um, follow this, this issue um, as, as a research area and co in cooperation with the Ministry of Education as well. Uh, so we adopted, um, um, I mean, first of all, we invested in the um, subject teacher. So the CLIL teacher is the subject teacher, not the language teacher. Um, uh, I mean, the, the, the teacher was entitled to be uh, to teach um, uh, the, his or her own subject in, um, uh, in, in, a, in in a foreign language that in Italy is mainly English in uh, um, uh, in, in upper secondary schools, but also in, in other foreign languages because um, Clel was born uh, was was uh, let's say fostered by you know at international level by the European Commission by the, the Council of Europe and so on um, to foster uh, plurilingual. So um, not, not only English. The majority, of course, um, uh, of, of uh, CLIL programs in, in Italy is in, in, in English, but also other languages are encouraged where, where, taught, where they are taught. Um, so the, la the, the subject teacher um, has to attend uh, um, for, upper, for teaching his or own um, uh, subject in foreign language uh, in upper secondary school. Um, so they have to, um, uh, to reach, first of all, um, the C1 one level uh, of competence according to the common European framework of reference for languages. Which wow, is C1 level. C1, yeah, which is quite demanding, but with B2 they can start teaching uh, in their classes uh, provided that they continue, you know, the progress. But this is because in our upper secondary schools um, the um, target level when um, uh, the competence uh, of competence of our students at the end of upper secondary schools is B2. So C1 is just a step up that um, uh, you know clear, clear teachers should 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 have. So um, at the same time, they, they need to develop. They need to get to the C one level, but they also need to attend a specific. Um, uh, course, uh, university course on CLIL methodology. Um, and then um, when they have, let's say, these two um, uh, titles, these two requirements, qualifications, they are entitled to do. Even if, uh, as I was saying, in their classes, they You can mean the in-service teacher, in teachers are required to take university course CLIL methodology? Exactly. I mean, they're, they're not, it's not um, uh, compulsory for everybody. It's just that um, it depends on the, um, um, there are choices by the, um, uh, the, the print school principals, first of all, uh, according to the highest level of competence, uh, competence of the teachers or some other requirements. They decide, um, so the, 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 the school principal in agreement with um, uh, all the, the, the school staff, they decide um, which subject and so which teachers will um, uh, teach CLIL uh, in, in the fifth class. It is only compulsory in the last class and not for the all amount of hours, but um, uh, it is very flexible. So in um, modules and in particular, well, the, the average of 50% um, of, the, of the, um, the subject, the amount of hours of the, of the subject. So um, it's just, uh, um, uh, these teachers are, um, so in service teachers, um, will uh, will uh, uh, attend these, these courses, uh, methodological courses uh, delivered by uh, university, um, and that's you know the it's it, yeah it's a quite you know. Um, 
uh, challenging, of course, um, uh, process and also quite, you know, time consuming, of course, for teachers, but we had a lot of enthusiasm. You can say that really in, uh, um, in Italy, even you during the lockdown, as, um, as I was saying, um, uh, we had a lot of uh, brilliant experiences by our teachers sharing their, you know, their activities, their um, case examples in, in you know, re remotely. Um, so it's um, uh, just showing how, how they enthusiastic are about um, about uh, about CLIL. So, but what is important is also that the ministry encourages what is called the CLIL team. So the, the um, let's say the entire the, the teacher is the subject. The CLIL teacher is the subject teacher fully entitled when fully entitled um, after all these requirements that I was mentioning. But um, a cooperation and so cooperation collaboration uh, with the language teachers or other language assistants, other uh, um, teachers um, uh, working in a field of language in the school, um, this uh, cooperation is, is, is encouraged, is strongly encouraged by, by the ministry um, in this um, sort of uh, uh, so-called uh, CLIL team, so that um, English teachers can, or language teachers, uh, in the case of other languages, can support um, the, the subject teacher uh, in terms of uh, uh, language and um, language teaching methods and so on. And the subject teacher, of course, can uh, um, uh, you know, give more um, uh, focus on the uh, specific uh, subject uh, syllabus and curriculum. Thank you. Wow. Um, th this is very informative and um, very helpful. And um, Let's get, in touch. Let's get in touch and maybe we can. Uh, yes, yes, yes can please. Ask. I'd like to invite you um, and yeah, talk to you more about this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you can also follow our courses uh, that has uh, the, the initial and uh, intermediate and advanced uh, pathways uh, to how on how to clear uh, you and teachers from Taiwan if you need to, to get deeper into the matter. Yeah, yes, maybe yes. Also, and spread our techno clear in in general. Yes, I would. Your colleagues, okay. Yes, I would spread the word and um, ask them to participate in techno clear. And I'd start off the new session just with the, the with focus on science literacy only um, uh, for for my center, the the center for um, bilingual education. Um, so thank you very much. Um, it's great learning from you, having an expert here in the- <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. So speak soon. Yes. Yeah, we, we've talked uh, in EVO or Minecraft MOOC, sometimes we, some, it's been mentioned that it's not really a MOOC, it's not massive, but I said, well, MOOC can be minuscule open online courses. And, and the stages in uh, a MOOC are that you, uh, you learn something and well, actually you, you, well, basically you connect with other people and then you, at the last stage, you, um, you go on to form projects with other people, you cluster into small groups and then you, in those small groups, you set up projects to continue for the future. So I, I sort of think that EVO is, is a massive online course, but this little conversation has become a minuscule online open course. So uh, I, I like the way that's developed. Uh, Maybe I, sorry, Van, we can uh, we can announce um, uh, our upcoming. I need to find the link and maybe we can share later. Mm -hmm. um, on the twenty seventh of November, uh, mm -hmm. we are having um, a webinar within the um, uh, Clear Ren. Um, uh, uh, it's it's, a, it's called Online Clean Ren Cafe. Uh, Clear Ren is an international network of researchers and scholars and teachers uh, working in the field of Clear, and I'm the co convener of this. Uh, Clean Ren Network, uh, together with uh, Professor Russell from uh, Melbourne and uh, Professor Linares from uh, Spain. And so we are hosting this event, uh, and Vance is going to be um, one of our uh, speaker, uh, guest speaker, on the 27th of November. Uh, it's uh, hosted by my uh, institute, Indire. Uh, there's a registration form. If you have just uh, there, uh, Vance, otherwise I can, I can look for it and we can post it. Um, yeah, I'm just grabbing on. it. Just, uh, yes, please. 
<laughs> okay, so you can register and we, um, we're going to, to have um, uh, an informal, yes, conversation on, on CLIL and uh, in particular, okay, thank you very much. In particular on the um, uh, uh, learning technologies for CLIL, because we are uh, in this different, in this um, CLIL and we deal with different research areas related to CLIL uh, and my particular, uh, let's say, uh, side, my particular area is, is learning technologies, so um, uh, this online cafe is uh, the first of three because one of us is um each of us is, is dealing with a particular area uh, and uh, mine is, is, is on, on uh, learning technologies for, for CLIL. So we um, uh, invite you to, to join us on the 27th of November. Thank you. Yeah, okay. And of course, since it's all going to be a learning together event, I think 27th of November is gonna be learning together 499 and 500 will follow big party. So maybe you can prepare for that. That'll be November 29th, I think. Mm -hmm. Anyway, okay, so I get to promote that for briefly. So I know uh, for Jane and I, we're in the same time zone, opposite sides of the same time zone, but it's uh, after 11 o'clock. Uh, it's not that that's a real problem, uh, but anyway, um, if uh, it, it, we, we have to be respectful of everybody's time, especially our, our presenters. And, uh, but if anybody has any last questions, I guess we could invite anybody to, if anybody has any, anything other pressing? Maybe about five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you've got our email, so please contact us, write us, and we'll yeah. be happy to, to answer. And we share all the Thank links. You. I was writing about uh, the, the, the links to share on the learning together. So we'll do that uh, yes, tomorrow. And, or if you okay. even send me an email, I'll put it in the, the, uh, the learningtogether.net, which is the, uh, where, the, where all these uh, archives go. So, well, this is Learning Together episode 497. And we've been very happy to have Leticia Shingonotto and Daniela Cucurulo. I think I got it. Great. Right. Pass your exam. <laughs> Pass your Italian. Uh, <laughs> I know. I'm coming basic, along. Basic um, level. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, thank you very much, everybody, for attending. It's November 6, 2020. I'm Vance Stevenson, Penang, Malaysia. I've had Jane Xian, also from Taiwan, who's been asking questions here. And uh, anyway, nice to see everybody. And so... Um, I think I'm, I think if you, if you go to learningtogether.pbworks.com, you'll find more events coming up. I think my next one is on the 12th of November, which is in six days. Anyhow, thank you very much for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. So thank, thank you, you Leticia. Bye. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you. Such a wonderful session. Thank you, Vance. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. I have to disassemble this now. I have to start with Facebook stream. So to the stream. Yeah. Everybody, there are a lot of people in the stream, by the way. Uh, let there me is. see. Yeah, let's see if I can. Just, I can tell you who was there. Susan Canella was there from Argentina. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jane, of course. Um, there were other people here earlier. Faisal Fayez, and I guess that was it. Okay. So anyway, they were. They left messages in the chat. I'm not. Well, other people came along and liked it, but they, they actually interacted in the chat. Okay, so all of that you can find on in at learningtogether.net tomorrow. All that will be posted. And so thank you very much again for taking your time to come and give us a very interesting presentation. We appreciate it. Was it was a pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Live stream stopping and the recording is stopping. Okay. Stop Bye.